Last year, I reviewed the Yamaha YDS-150 digital saxophone, and while I really wanted to like this instrument, I found it to be a big letdown. Since then, Yamaha has released another version, the YDS-120, which I'm going to review for you in this video. In the meantime, we can only hope that Yamaha gets their act together on this thing and releases an improved version. Let's find out if they fixed the problems I found in the original version, and if this is the digital saxophone you're looking for. Two big criticisms I had of this original YDS-150 were this completely useless metal bell and the real saxophone mouthpiece that didn't do anything. For me, the bell and the mouthpiece only serve as some sort of bizarre saxophone placebo. So I was very happy to see that they ditched both of those things on the new model. The whole thing is significantly smaller and a bit lighter, which makes it much more practical as a saxophone practice tool, especially if you're gonna be traveling with it. particularly like the new mouthpiece design, which is comfortable and functional. There's no need for a fake reed and ligature here. Apart from that, this is basically identical to the original YDS-150, so there wasn't a whole lot of development work that went into this. All they did was slash off that bell and the price. The YDS-150 sells for about $900, while the YDS-120 sells for about $500. Wait a second, are you telling me that removing this little piece of brass knocks 400 bucks off the price? There's gotta be more differences, right? There are. This new version doesn't come with a case. And another feature that I wish they didn't remove. Why did you do this, Yamaha? They removed Bluetooth. On the original YDS-150, you can wirelessly connect to devices so that you can have music or backing tracks play through headphones or the speaker. That's mainly how I would use this instrument, whether it's practicing with the metronome or with play-alongs, that's fun and practical. So not having Bluetooth is a major issue for me. There is an audio input though, so you can hear your external audio with a wired connection. Yeah, but that still doesn't add up to a $400 difference though, does it? Real quick, this video is not sponsored by Yamaha, but they did send me this instrument for the purposes of creating this review for you. I recently visited Yamaha in Hamamatsu, Japan to tour their saxophone factory, and I've got to give them a lot of credit. Not only do they make mostly amazing products, but they're also extremely gracious. When I met with them, they first thanked me for the past reviews I've made of Yamaha products, which haven't always been all that kind, and they asked me if I would consider reviewing the new YDS-120. While I was a bit surprised, I said yes, certainly, but know that I'm going to be just as honest as I always am, and they said, of course, that's what we want you to do. So hats off to Yamaha. This video is actually sponsored by you watching. Your support is what allows me to continue making great saxophone content like this. To the many folks out there who enroll in Better Sax courses and purchase our saxophones, mouthpieces, reeds, and other accessories, I want to say a huge thank you. I couldn't do any of this without you. After this video, be sure to head over to bettersax.com where we have something for every saxophone player at every level. Our gear is designed by saxophone players, specifically for saxophone players, and our courses have helped tens of thousands of students level up their playing while having fun in the process. Now back to the review. <laughs> That's what playing B flat is like. On my YDS 150 with the useless bell and mouthpiece, I have a major problem with key responsiveness. I have to press really hard, otherwise, the wrong notes are playing all the time. This new YDS 120 I have is much better in that regard, but not perfect. There's still one note that doesn't always trigger when I finger it, unless I press really hard, that's my low B. So as long as I don't have to play any low Bs, 
I'm good. Now I've been reviewing and playing digital saxophones for a very long time and the trend in recent years has been to create instruments intended as quiet practice tools rather than for performance. So I'm looking at the YDS-120 strictly as a practice tool and for that reason it is a huge improvement over the YDS-150. It's smaller, lighter and cheaper. The key layout is just like a real saxophone. It's comfortable and mainly quiet, although I do have a few keys that squeak a bit. A little bit annoying, maybe, maybe some oil would fix that. My other complaint about both YDS models is that they don't have rechargeable batteries. Instead, they opted for triple A's, which don't really last very long, especially if you're using the external speaker. You can power it with a USB cable, but then it's not wireless anymore. Alto 3. Alto 6. Alto 7. Wow, soprano 4. Tenor 11. Baritone 5. That's a slap tongue. The onboard sounds are identical on both of these instruments. You got 56 saxophones, none of which sound very much like a real saxophone. So I don't really see the point. Why have so many? You got a few other sounds in there as well. That's harmonica. Some kind of flute. Another synth. Like its predecessor, the YDS-120 can be controlled by Yamaha's dedicated app that allows you to program altissimo fingerings and change the sounds. But since they removed Bluetooth with this version, you gotta connect it to your phone with a cable. Oh, it's micro USB. Are we still using that? I have like 7 million different cables in my house, but none of them is micro USB to lightning. So if you're like me and you have an iPhone, you're gonna have to order a special cable just to connect this to your phone to use a pretty mediocre app. Since the app is the only way to program Altissimo fingerings, it's pretty important, so that's a bummer. So here's my conclusion. The Yamaha YDS-120 is a big improvement over its predecessor. You're getting nearly the exact same device for 45% less money. It's gonna be a lot easier to travel with or just leave on your desk as I like to do because it's so much smaller. The main drawbacks are a lack of Bluetooth connectivity and a rechargeable battery. Still, with a couple of cables, you can do everything on this device as you can on the much more expensive version. So it's a no brainer which one of these you should buy. The key response is still a bit iffy on these, but if you get one that works well, you've got a good saxophone practice tool that a lot of people will enjoy. Here's my suggestions to Yamaha. Put Bluetooth connectivity back in this. Make the key response rock solid. Switch to a rechargeable battery and make the connector USB-C. Those changes would make this a fantastic product. Now, someone else has already made a even smaller digital practice tool that has all of those features and comes with a case. So go ahead and watch my review of the Travel Sacks 2 to see if this might be a better choice for you.